Welcome or welcome back to Sweet OP. I'm Zui and I hope you enjoy today's video. But before we get right into it, I'm obligated to remind you to, to click either the like or dislike button, commenting something down below and of course sharing the video after you finished watching it. If you have any suggestions or ideas for a story, my Discord link is in my link tree that is down in the description, as well as my Patreon and Ko-fi for any donations you may want to send my way. Anyways, let's get right into it. You had to admit, this was wrong. But your heart told you to keep on pushing. The beeps and boops from the chatting app you used went off like a foreboding rhythm, only helped by the mild drizzle from the outside. So who's the target? read the message that just popped up on screen. Your eyes filled with tears of joy, and your lips curled up into a gleefully evil smile. It had been two years ago when you were first introduced to your beloved. Back then, you were nothing but a mere journalist. Actually, you still were. But your first time meeting him was... normal. You have to admit, no hard feelings yet. But it went great, and you simply could not get a smile out of your head. It haunted you and your dreams. Your dreams played a large role in your obsession. As far as you can remember, dreams were never something you had, despite being of utmost importance. As a person only dreamed when they reached the deepest level of sleep, so true relaxation from nightly rest had only come to you upon meeting him personally. You made your personal goal to follow your object of desire everywhere. Attend every event, ask as many questions. After just one small interview two years ago, you had become his number one fan. He noticed that too. And that's when he arguably made a mistake. After a night of drinking with himself, a few friends and you, <laughs> of course you, you knew exactly where his favorite places to drink were. He fell right into your trap. A ravenous night of passion. Something you had never felt before. And something you didn't quite expect of a soft man like him, but that just made you want him all the more. After that incident, you had become a secret couple. Hidden from his whore of a girlfriend. But no matter what you said, he simply couldn't choose between either of you. For one, she was his high school sweetheart. Not like you, she was a hero. She had money, friends, and quite frankly, she was more attractive than you. However, if what your beloved said was true, there weren't that many differences outside of looks, which is something you very much did not believe. Every time the talks between the two of you got a little serious, this nagging feeling spread inside you. A voice, a demon, a monster, the very combination of all your insecurities. It clawed at your mind, drilling into every fold of your brain. Bouts of vomiting, headaches, and the need to gouge yourself on noodles and chocolate always followed. He would choose his sweetheart, wouldn't he? No matter how difficult he claimed his choice to be, in the end he would choose the easy option. The person he had already spent too much time with, the person he was working very closely with, the person that slept in the same house as he did. No. No. Your entire life you had been rejected by everyone. Family, friends, even your godforsaken job. Did you want to become a journalist? Of course not! This had been your second option. Why was this the one thing you were good at? Turning two sentence tweets into a three page article? <laughs> you may be good at that, but you really hated it. You hated your readers, you hated your boss, you hated everything, but not him. He was different. 
There was one thing, the one saving grace of your job. You knew people. You knew the underground, the villains. With a fluttering heart, you talked to shady individuals. People who saw you as nothing but a piece of meat wrapped in money. And honestly, if it ended with you getting your beloved, you would have slept with all of them. Through pulling your strings, you fell into a chat room with a certain man who was right now texting with you. The target, you typed, is gravity. For a moment you stared at your phone, eyes twitching with excitement. That will cost extra, really whiskey, said the text. Heroes like her who are in the top 20 have not only excellent powers, but also excellent security. Your heart jumped. I don't care. 150,000 German Euro. You raised an eyebrow. Euro by now had become the most expensive currency on the planet. Well, looks like you won't be getting that new VR headset or a new apartment in the near future. Fine, you typed in all caps. But there's a serious detail you need to absolutely follow. Otherwise, I refuse payment. I'm a professional. There are always details. Your breath hitched. This man had already murdered his way through the top 100 of heroes. A total of 12 confirmed assassinations. And countless more, who no one really cares about as they were nobodies. It needs to look like she did it herself. Your beloved hated it when people went the easy way out. And ironically, it was the easiest way for him to lose all feelings for her. And then he would be in your arms. Gleefully blushing, you imagined cooking for him in nothing but an apron. As he read the newspaper at the kitchen table, drinking coffee. Game enter. Make it look like self-deletion. Got it. It will take me a while. Can I take off my payment now? Expect the rest when it's done. Hmm. I'd say maybe a few weeks. I need her full schedule. There are risks, after all. <laughs> she is my biggest target yet. Also get rid of your phone. And I mean completely. Use a goddamn grinder or a mixer. And throw it in the ocean. Send the money to this address. Excited, you noted down everything he said. Meanwhile, the hitman, Black Knife, leaned back in his chair. He loved crazy chicks like you. They always became regulars. Their targets usually were entertaining as well. And most importantly, most of them were safe. In addition, his quirk, Corpse Maker, was perfect for his job. Corpse Maker allowed him to mold and manipulate corpses into any shape or form he desired. If he wanted to, he could decapitate gravity. All he needed to do was reattach the head and morph her body. He could be as depraved and evil as he wanted with all of his approaches. This was going to be an interesting few weeks. You were sitting in front of your computer researching upcoming heroes who were currently still attending your A for a top 10 evaluation. You went through the internships, organized meetups for an interview, and most importantly, finished up a different article you had been writing for three days now. You might be in the age of misinformation and news spam, but this didn't mean you didn't give it your all. Absent-mindedly, you reached to your left and pulled a potato chip out of your back and ate it. When suddenly, your doorbell rung. It shook you to your very core, and slowly you got up and walked to the entrance door. Your apartment was incredibly cramped and tiny. Saving up money was a hobby of yours, after all. With a twitching eye, you looked through the peephole. 
Immediately your hand moved to your right, turning on the light in your living room, while at the same time you comb through your hair with your left. Before gently opening the door with a smile. Hey, Mr. Midoriya, you said sweetly. Hey, uh, it's uh, been a while. It really has been a while, wasn't it? Too long. Way too long. Every day you didn't spend with him felt wasted. Yeah. Hey. His voice was flat. I know it's sudden, but can I come in? Your smile widened, and your inner voice shouted at you to not make it go too far. Otherwise, you'd look creepy. I, I mean, you look behind yourself. Ever since you hired the hitman, you cleaned your apartment up perfectly in anticipation of this leaving just enough empty bottles in very tactical positions, of course. It's a bit messy, but sure. He entered your apartment slowly, gaze focused on the floor, while you threw a blanket on your dusty old sofa. Let me uh, clean up a bit while you get comfy, you said as he sat down. Biting your lower lip, you made sure to bend down as seductively as possible to pick up the tactically empty soda bottles and cans you had placed. You could practically feel his gaze. So, you said as you disposed of them and approached him. What are you doing here? Wanna fu- Crap, you almost offered to sleep with him. You needed to slow down. After all, he wasn't your boyfriend just yet. I, I mean, wanna drink some tea? Nice save. I... Can you... Make a green tea with... His lower lip quivered. A lemon slice, please. Quickly you walk to your kitchen aisle. So, what got you so down? He sighed. Uh, um... I, um, I broke up with Ochako. Your grin turned twisted. You couldn't hold your emotions back. You needed to laugh. You needed to cry. You needed to bite something really, really hard. Quickly, you sliced off a piece of the lemon and shoved it in your mouth. The brain from the sour juice calmed you a bit. You suppressed an aroused gasp as you sliced off another piece and placed it on his drink. Disposed of the lemon in your mouth before returning to him. So, you asked, barely able to contain yourself. How come? Did she learn of what we were doing behind her back? Izuku shook his head. N no, she didn't. Oh, did, <laughs> did she ironically cheat on you? You know, making it a weird triangle square thing that we're having? Now that you thought about it, that could have been a plan too. No. Worse. What could possibly be worse? Dial it back, you thought. You're going too fast. Slow down. Izuku shook his head in disbelief. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. It would ruin the mood. Well, uh, I'm glad you immediately came to me after breaking up. Who else should I have gone? You shrugged. I don't know, maybe a bar, get a few drinks with your buddies. After all, you just broke up. His lips quivered. I thought you'd be happy hearing she. Made a permanent choice. And my choice easier, I, I guess. That's why I came. Honestly, Izuku himself had come up with a plan. To make his choice easier, he wanted to see which one of the two old women he so dearly loved would crack first. Sure, it was cruel, but he didn't have the heart to break either of your hearts directly. He'd rather suffer in silence, torn between two worlds, than ruin any of yours. Which, if you knew, would make you even more crazy for him. He would start off by going on a six-month work exchange program to America with Uraka. For the time, he'd be very, very far away from you and constantly around his other girlfriend. 
a test to see if you'd be able to deal with that. He'd then try the same thing the other way around, and eventually, either you or his high school sweetheart Uraka would have broken up due to the relationship becoming too difficult. Honestly, he was glad this no longer needed to happen. It was cruel either way. I mean, of course I'm happy. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not happy because you're sad. Your smile betrayed your words. Thank God he was too busy drinking to notice. He smacked his mouth. There was something off about the drink. Maybe too much lemon juice? If he knew you put an aphrodisiac in it instead of sugar, he'd probably leave right then and there. So, you can fully commit to me now? Yeah. I have no love for her left after what she did. But I feel sorrow over losing her as a friend too. You shrugged. Eh, I cannot stay friends with a guy I break up with. Not that there were many you thought. Mm -hmm. That's why this choice was so hard to begin with. Every other day, you took him saying this as an insult. He'd break up with you if you remained friends. What a joke. What a fucking insult. The only time you truly, utterly got mad at him. What a preposterous statement. Mythos reply. It hurt you. In a perfect world, he would have taken you over her in a heartbeat. But just seeing the miserable state you were in compared to that preppy little whore he called girlfriend! But thankfully, no longer a concern. Smiling, you took his hand. You suppressed a gasp. His hand was warm and soft, despite his brutal hero work. You wanted to rub it against your cheeks. Like it. Bite it. But instead, you intertwined your fingers with his. Let me guess. She broke up with you in public and that's why you're so sad. His eyes widened. If she had done what she did in public. His stomach turned for a moment, but then he looked at you and forced a smile. No. Thankfully not. His eyes met yours. Man... Why are your eyes always so sparkly? Izuku began to feel hot. I... He blinked as his heartbeat increased. Mm -hmm. You hummed. We can talk about her. Can we... Can we do it later? Please. You nodded. Sure. You mused. Pressing your body against his, he blushed hard, gently rubbing his face against your shoulder. I love you, he hummed. You gave a toothy grin. And I love you too, forever. <laughs>